if you're being asked for the hybridization of AlCl3, your teacher wants you to draw the Lewis structure and then say what the hybridization of Al is based off of that. The answer is sp2. I'll show you why. You're going to put Al in the center. You're going to surround it with three chlorine atoms. Now, to draw the actual Lewis structure, you have to count how many electrons are brought by each atom. Aluminum in uh, group 13 brings three valence electrons. Chlorine in group 17 brings seven valence electrons each. That's three for the aluminum and seven for each of the three chlorines. That's seven times three. I get 24 valence electrons total. Now I'm going to bond two, four, six electrons just to connect my outer atoms with my inner atom. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a molecule. And then I'm going to fill the octet on the outer atoms. That was two, four, six electrons already. Eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. That's all the electrons I'm allowed to use. All of my chlorines have a full octet, and so I like like I'm done. Aluminum does not need a full octet. It is an exception to the octet rule. My personal rule of thumb is that only chlorine, no, sorry, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, and silicon. Those are the only five atoms that actually always follow the octet rule. Aluminum does not. This is a valid Lewis structure for aluminum chloride, even though aluminum doesn't have a full octet. Why is that significant? Here you go. You have one, two, three sigma bonds. And by sigma bonds, I mean single bonds. And you have no pi bonds. The fact that there are no pi bonds often leads you to believe it's sp3 hybridized. But according to Vesper, this molecule is trigonal planar. That's because there's no lone pair on the aluminum. After all, it's an exception to the octet rule. It's the shape here that forces you to choose sp2 hybridization. sp2 hybrid orbitals arrange themselves in a trigonal planar fashion. There is a leftover 2p orbital, and that's like subshell 2p orbital, that is above and below the aluminum here that is unoccupied once you hybridize the orbitals that are required to make the sp2 hybridized orbitals that make these sigma bonds in case you're wondering where it went. So if I was to draw an orbital overlap diagram, I'd have to draw my AL in the center. There's one coming out at you. There's one going back into the page. There's one going straight to the right. These are the three sp2 hybridized orbitals. And as well, there is an unhybridized 2p orbital that has no electrons inside of it. It's empty. That corresponds to the lack of a lone pair on the aluminum here and repulsion between that orbital and these three. Maybe it's not repulsion, but this configuration helps you explain the trigonal planar shape of the AlCl3 molecule. Great. Your teacher wanted to hear sp2 hybridization. Let me just say as a caveat that when you have liquid AlCl3, two of these molecules kind of combine together and the Al is then tetrahedrally arranged, you could get away with saying it's sp3 hybridized at that point because like the lone pair on one chlorine atom from an AlCl3 is coming in to create another sigma bond in here. But you're not being asked that. You are probably just asked for the fact that it's trigonal planar and sp2 hybridized. I also want to point out that um, in the coldest phases in solid AlCl3, apparently the chlorines are octahedrally arranged 
and so it's sp3d2 hybridized again uh that violates almost every rule you've probably learned in high school so don't worry about it when you look it up online that's basically where this hybridization model breaks down huh there's always exceptions to rules am i right not this one just say this and this yeah yeah best of luck